Hey gamers, this is Kita, and today we're going to look at the Megazora Barrier Glitch, which was found by Japanese runner Bear. Um, before I get into that, I need to describe some aspects of the Bottle Adventure. If you'd like to skip this description, I'll have an annotation to skip right ahead to the glitch. Alright, so as you can see, there's a wealth of info on my screen right now. Over the gameplay, I have uh, Magic. Which right now it's at 86. This describes how many units of magic I can use. So for example, if I use a fire arrow, it'll go from 86 to 82. Because using a fire arrow takes 4 units of that. So when it's at 0, I can't use anymore. That's when the, like, the green bar will just go all the way down. And then underneath that I have magic length. Which shows how much magic you can use. So normally it's at 48 when you have normal magic, and then right now it's at 96, which is double magic, meaning I can just use 96 units of magic if I filled it up all the way. So underneath that, I have the readings of an 8-byte timer. This timer counts up from 0 at reset or power on, and it continues to go up at the same rate no matter what you do in the game. Um, the importance of this timer is that it's actually read and written every single time you use hot spring water. I'll get more into that in a little bit. So, on the left of the gameplay, you see the hex editor, which shows a live segment of the game's memory. So, more specifically, this chunk of memory includes uh, where the game writes to when we catch hot spring water. So, every time you catch hot spring water, a bunch of bytes are written, but for the context of this video, we're only uh, interested in the first line of 8 bytes that it writes, which is this timer that I have on my screen. So let me go ahead and demonstrate. So I'll put the first bottle on C left and the fourth bottle on C down. So right now, I'll, let me pause. Let's take a look at these eight bytes. Right now they're zero, but if I swing the first bottle and catch, now it wrote what the timer was when I swung. So, while it actually looks different, that's because the information on the left is in hexadecimal, which is base 16, and then the information over the gameplay is in decimal, which is base 10, because I find that easier to work with. So that's that there. And the way the game does the math when determining where to write this is that it will shift it over depending on the bottle slot. So right now what's highlighted is slot 1. This will be slot 2, this is slot 3, and this is slot 4. And I will catch to demonstrate. So if you look, there it is. I swing bottle 4 and sure enough it writes here. So if you think about it in a way, the game's just doing a shortcut to choose where to write to. And that would be perfectly okay, but you can get bottles over other slots using bottle dupe. So, if we catch hot spring water written in one of these bottles, for instance, Captain's Hat, we'll write it in spots that were not meant to be seen. So here, let me uh, highlight this line right here. There. And you see how it wrote over here? That actually changed the magic length, but I'll get into that in a little bit. We're not quite there yet. Okay, so basically, this chunk of data around this area that I'm highlighting, this is all stuff that's meant to be written to with hot spring water. However, this information down here, like stuff as we get further down, this is actually referring to other parts of the game's memory. So we can use this concept to write values to bytes that we were never supposed to be able to reach. So this byte is the byte that we're looking at for today's video, which determines the length of uh, magic, the magic length byte, as you can see. So 83 in hex is 131. So that's how much magic we can hold. So yeah, the idea the idea is that uh, you shift over enough and you can write to it. Like you can determine 
which mask slot will write where if you just count how many times you shift over. Oh, also it's important to keep in mind that the data that you can write to is different between Japanese and English because they have a different memory layout. Like Both versions have Bottle Adventure, but you can write to different bytes. So you need the, the Japanese version to write to this magic length byte. So this magic length uh, value can be manipulated to whatever we want, since it will write to whatever uh, timer byte 4 is. Like As you see on the screen, timer byte 4 is 131. So it wrote a 131 to magic length. That's not a coincidence. So timer byte 4 goes up by 1 approximately every 90 seconds. So if you leave your game on for about 3 hours and 10 minutes, you can get it to go up to 128, and that's our target for this glitch. Also, before I get into that, for those who don't know, a byte can hold numbers between 0 and 255. Both magic and magic length are stored as one byte. However, magic length is unsigned, meaning it can be any value from 0 to 255, while magic itself is signed, and that means it can hold either positive or negative values. So after 127, instead of going to 128, it will go wrap around to negative 128. And so this puts us in an interesting spot. And I will demonstrate. So we can hold 131 units of magic, meaning we can hold more than 127. So we can basically get a negative amount of magic, which has strange effects. So right now we're at 106. We'll get one more and that'll put us over the top. There we go. And notice what that did. That, like, made the magic just freak out, just go all the way over the side. So... It says we have negative 126 units of magic, but negative magic actually works pretty differently than what you'd expect. So I can't actually shoot a fire arrow or use any sort of magic at all. However, the Zora barrier still works, and that's because the way the Zora barrier works is because the game does some sort of computation based on how much magic you have to determine how to draw the Zora barrier. So let me see if I can uh, show this off well. So when it's negative, instead of the barrier being visible and around you, it goes underneath you. But this completely messes up the graphics. Like, as you can see, the colors are just going absolutely haywire and ridiculous. Yeah, this is some crazy stuff. You can see it better if you swim around, it, like, basically going the entire opposite way. Te the textures are disappearing, we got some crazy stuff going on. And we can combine this with another glitch to keep the effects. So, if I do this, and take off the mask quick enough, boom. All the textures are gone. And we can just walk around like this and see. And it will stay like this until we use magic again. But this is only uh, a visual effect. It's only getting rid of the textures that you see. But everything's still there. And we could change the color even by trying to charge a spin attack. It's some cool stuff. Alright, and I'd like to know a few more things with this as well. So... Basically, when you do this, you can just use magic as long as you want. But how do you get it to stop? Well... Since we can't decrease our magic, we, we have to resort to just increasing it. So by getting magic, that puts us at negative 78. And that brings up another important point. Which is, the, uh, I guess the lower your magic is, so like the closer it is to negative 128, the stronger this uh, messed up magic barrier will be. 
So as you get to a number closer to zero, the effects aren't going to be as strong. Here it's still pretty significantly strong, but you'll see that as I get more, it will the effects won't be nearly as powerful. So, like here, it still changes the color, but that's about it. It doesn't get rid of all the textures if you leave it up long enough. Alright, so then get enough, and then that will put you right to uh, a normal amount of magic, and that'll fix that. Another thing to keep in mind is here. If I save with Song of Time, what happens to the magic bar? See if I can speed this up a little bit. Alright, as you can see, magic length is still 131. So it does save. However, it turns out that magic length is just a flag that doesn't get reset with Song of Time. Or anything for that matter. It resets once you actually reset. So let me reset. And then I'll load the same file. Also notice how this timer on screen reset back to zero and now it's counting up again. There. So, magic length is back down to 96, as expected. And one more thing I want to mention. Okay, now suppose we waited such a long time that this uh, timer bite 3 was 2. Which, that would take about 12 hours of leaving your game on. And I can simulate that by just writing to these timer values. You can trust me that it will work. So let me put a zero in timer byte four slot, and then a two in timer byte three slot. Okay, and now when we do this uh, captain's hat bottle adventure, the magic bar goes completely crazy. So let me briefly explain that byte. Basically, that byte is in charge of some sort of a multiplier for the size of the bar. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but basically, 1, 2, and 3 will magnify by a large amount how much uh, magic you can hold. And then every uh, fourth byte, or, well, every fourth bit, We'll just uh, act as zero. So that's something to keep in mind. So you can just like fill this magic bar up all the way if you want, just like uh, before. And you could get some other strange effects too. For instance... Well, I spoiled it. <laughs> For instance, do this in the shooting gallery. And hello. Yeah, basically this is really fun to mess around with. Uh, I included in the video description uh, an album of pictures I took. I took about like 130 images with this. I think you should check it out, it's cool. There's a lot more that you can test to. Like, it's just fun to mess around with, and I hope you enjoy the trick. Alright, later.